15, five. 15 to 20 residential yeah. caregivers. At and, least. And, and easy. Yeah. yeah. And can a family member be the caregiver? They cannot pay. I mean, a family member can oversee, but they can't be paid by the family member to be a caregiver, I would assume. You well, you pay your daughter to look at your daughter you. say we get paid well. <laughs> Most family members are not caregivers because it's overwhelming. Well, there are a couple of people who certainly have family here a lot, and you like think, every day. Like three or four. And you think time. that they're, they're here as caregivers? As caregivers. Oh, yeah. And they run around and my chandelier vibrates. And I had um, girls over for a bridge the other day, and everybody saw the chandelier. They... And what time was that? Because I had a conversation. I don't with mind that if it's, it was one. I don't mind, but I do mind when it's ten. At night, ten at night. Right. All right. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Apologize for the delay. I'm glad Teresa Jenkins, uh, my trusty, you know, friend here, <laughs> was on time. Uh, I apologize. The uh, board meeting room slightly over. So. That's okay. Um, Thank you to those that may be viewing this. Um, again, if you hung on for the extra two minutes. Um, but again, welcome to, to the Coffee with Tyler and Teresa. Welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so um, I, I asked Teresa to join me uh, before we jump into the questions you might have. Um, just because, again, uh, she gives perspective, um, some perspective that I don't have. And so again, just continue to facilitate that communication, um, the, the conversation. And so the next coffee with Tyler, I, I'm going to see if I can wrangle in Eric Peterson. And then the following one will probably be Carlos or another team member. So um, it's something that, again, just to enhance uh, the experience for you, but also the communication. So now you get two of us um, instead of just me. So hope that's okay with everybody. Great. Um, but with that, what questions do you have? What, what, what's on your mind? What do you want to know? What do you want okay. to know? So I'll start. So um, when we swim in the morning, we have outsiders. That's all fine. However, uh, Father Gene couldn't come for mass two Saturdays in a row. And so I called the Catholic home to see if I could join their 430 mass. No, not allowed. And that kind of bothers me a little bit because Jean Germain is here all the time from the Catholic home. So the question for the viewers is there's there's visitors that are swimming in our pool. Are yes. they swimming with you? Or yes. are they have their yes. own aquatic class? No, they have a class at nine okay. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And there were three, right? Three plus five this morning. There were five outsiders. Five outsiders. Okay, so I need to circle back with Willie um, because my understanding was that that was a completely separate class. Um, because again, um, we do know that the the five do have their vaccinations. Um, okay. Again, we we did clarify there that. There they go. Um, and so I guess. Yeah, that was them. Okay. They must have been there for yeah. a second class. And two and two rentals. Also come. Yeah. Yeah. They used to live here. Okay. Han and Crysdale. Okay. So are you saying that you aren't comfortable with them? I'm comfortable, but I'm uncomfortable with the fact that I can't go over there to Mass. I, I'll have a conversation with um, the CEO over there, Dave. Okay. Um, Thank to, you. To understand Thank you. why they aren't. Um, especially, and again, Two different philosophies. I mean, again, um, if if you were to say again, one of the caveats that I've made Willie do before we opened it up to outside visitors for the safety and security of, of our own residents is um, because again, you're not wearing masks in the pool. I'm assuming um, is that they had to be vaccinated, and so again, all five of those individuals should have and so I'll verify. So they've that. been checked. Yes, um, at least that was the direction I gave, and I'll verify that. Um, but again, from a Catholic home, again, unfortunately I can't dictate them, um, mm -hmm. but again, I can definitely ask and say, Dave, um, my resident is fully vaccinated, mm -hmm. non-symptomatic, can she please join 
um, for for Matt. So I'll do thank that you. for you, Carolyn, and I'll circle I, back. Thank you. you. I guess we're separated by pews, so it'll be just one. Right. And exactly. I would respect that. Yeah. Then the other See, thing that sorry, go why ahead. don't you take a go turn? Ahead. No. So my other um, question is, what does the weekend director? What kind of power does the weekend director have? And I'm going to cite an example of a weekend ago when um, Alex fell into the marigold patch and um, was taken to the hospital and they did a COVID and his COVID was positive, at which time his wife and whoever she had eaten with the night before and there were three of them, so total four of them um, were quarantined, and I would understand that. And um, the nurse, uh, the head nurse, I think, on the in the health center informed these people that they were quarantined for the weekend. So then the next morning, Alex was um, tested again, and he was negative. However. Eric said he had no power to release the, the quarantine people until Monday morning. And so my question is, what if there was a wedding or a baptism or something, and these people are quarantined, is there an explanation? Because if I was head of the health, I think I might have emailed you. Would that have been inappropriate? No. Um, so the question was raised, what power does the, I'll use your words, what power does the weekend director on call have? Mm -hmm. um, because again, for the community standpoint, Teresa, myself, and all the director mm -hmm. teams rotate through when we all take a, a weekend that we are responsible for the community. Essentially, that director has oversight of the community like, like I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But I thought. Obviously, they can make calls, they can consult, but they're here to support you as well as our employees. In the regard um, to the situation you were mentioning uh, of the COVID positive resident, the reason we quarantined in residents and then there was a negative. If, and again, uh, if I were in Eric's position, we were being as precautionary and conservative as possible. Um, and again, I, I don't want to say too much um, because I, I don't have the facts in front of me, but I know that we weren't receiving the hospital documentation that gave us the the Result. cut clear results that okay. that individual was truly negative. Okay. We had heard that the resident had tested negative. So again, that that's something it's that we hear. Correct. And again, the source was very sound. And I'm not I'm not you know, but from my regard, for the safety and security of all residents, knowing that this was new, and and we wanted to take the most precautious approach. Um, we said we need to see it in the, in the hospital form. And I'll share with you that, you know, even in the documentation the hospital shared with us, there was even some questions there, um, okay. kind of back and forth. Okay. And so again, that's where we didn't have 100% absolute clarity. And so we erred on the side of precaution. If it would have happened on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, and we still didn't have those clear expectations, still we still would have held the same regard. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I, I know that that situation was was troubling and I know that there's still, um, you know, that, that effect um, and that what if, and, and again, because it was a weekend, we can't do anything till Monday. That, that's not the case. Um, again, there, there's a number of things that, again, sure. Eric, um, you know, I'm sure would have consulted Ashley or myself. Mm -hmm. And again, um, I know I've spoken to directors on weekends. I know Teresa has too. I know Teresa even came in on that Friday um, on, on her day off to, to just kind of get her arms wrapped around it. Um, but again, we were taking the utmost precaution. Um, and that was, again, something that I know was was not easy. And it's something that I don't take lightly. Um, and and again, the decision was made to, to err on that side of precaution. And then as soon as we had the definitive result, you know, in hand and we were able to review it with the appropriate clinical team, that's when we, we released uh, okay. everybody essentially. And so again, that documentation came over late Sunday night, early Monday morning. Thank you. So, And I do have to compliment you on keeping this place so clean. Um, there's been some griping because even the people going to Mass this past Saturday 
were late because of the lineup at the front desk and the kiosk. Yep. The kiosk, yes. And, but when they're graping, I'm saying, and meanwhile, we have been clean. I said that to everybody, you know, bear with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know it's frustrating. I, I know that we're all, you know, well, what's fair isn't always equal then, though. Right. I, I would love to be able to go to Mass. If, right. Now, Rita Edwards is coming to Bridges this afternoon. Right. And so, again, we haven't shut down to visitors, you know, and, and again, that's where I, I call those individuals that are going to Mass or, or coming to the community. Um, again, we, ha we aren't there. Um, and so that's, again, our East Castle Place stance and protocol. Um, we do have, I feel, protocols in place. Obviously, if Lyle or Fumata were to see somebody that has a high temperature or a cough mm -hmm. or something of that nature, they would turn them away. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing Course. overnight for security. Yep. Um, I got a call last night from Fumata because she was getting uh, a little pushback from uh, a visitor that wanted to visit saying, why do I need to temp? So I walked up and, and again, then all of a sudden the visitor was like, okay, I'll take my temp. And again, it's just yeah. some of those things that right. we're doing out of the utmost precaution. Yeah. Um, that I would hope visitors would understand. Mm -hmm. um, trust me, I see the line in the morning. Um, I know Teresa's, uh, Lila and Fumata see the line and, and it is tenuous, but at the same time, we wanna know who's in our building right. for the safety and security of you. And so again, we're, we're gonna, we'll take those challenges. Um, I'd you. much rather have those challenges than the other challenge. Right. And just one more from me is, are we up for the booster? So, so the question was, what about the booster? Mm -hmm. um, and so from everything I've seen, um, the booster has not yet been approved and it's not yet available okay. um, in the US. Okay. Um, I know that the FDA is working through their process, um, even with the first vaccine, as well as a booster. Um, right now it's, it's not being indicated, um, but if we were, if the FDA or, or the CDC were to come out and say that the Moderna and Pfizer have a booster, I would assure you on a 99% uh, positivity rate of, or that's the wrong word, George, a 99% confidence rate, we'll use that, that we would be able to hold a clinic for you as East Castle residents. We'd work with our pharmacy and do okay. a similar clinic to what we did you know, back in January and February. So again, I want to assure you that if that becomes available, I don't foresee that you would need to go out to your CDS and be responsible for that for yourself. I feel that you're an East Castle Place resident. That's something that Teresa, myself, the team would coordinate in um, with, you know, a CVS pharmacy or even our health direct pharmacy provider. So, Thank you. So once that becomes available, we'll definitely, my ear, you know, is to the ground on that. But again, at this time, it's not been indicated um, or approved. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. someone's <laughs> All right. What other questions are out there? Um, what is the policy for caregivers going on our little trips? So the question was, what is the policy for caregivers going on the trips? So the caregivers, um, again, must be masked, they must have checked in and, and be um, non-symptomatic. Um, but if the caregiver is there caring for an individual, they would be allowed um, just like anything. If the caregiver is going on their own accord, that would not be approved, right. but I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. that, and if that's happened, let us know. Absolutely. Um, but and if the caregiver is doing something you think is not something they should be yeah. appropriate, let me know. Because those things can be t fixed. Yes. Easily. And quickly. And quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't fix things if we're not aware of them. Yeah. But if there's a fee connected with this, does the East Castle pay? No. no. The resident. The resident pays. The resident that pays because that that's their caregiver. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you as a re so for instance, Ms. Pullman, if you had a a caregiver that you wanted to bring along to the symphony, you would be responsible for your ticket as well as the cost of the ticket of the yeah. of the caregiver. Okay. East Castle Place does not pay for that private duty caregiver, much like East Castle Place does not pay for that care yeah. um, 
of the resident. Yeah, so if you're noticing things that you think are inappropriate, Mrs. Pullman, let me know. Yeah. What other questions? Well, I'll, I'll share a couple updates then with you. Um, so on the vein of COVID, you'll receive that weekly update and email. Um, at this time, we don't have any independent living residents or residents across the board that have tested positive for COVID-19. Um, we have tested in the health center twice a week, employees and um, residents. Those have all returned negative as well. Um, and so again, that's part of our protocol. Milwaukee County is now north of 10% from a positivity rate of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And so again, we'll continue to test our healthcare workers um, twice a week, as well as the residents. Um, and then of course, if any independent living resident becomes symptomatic, they let Teresa know, you let me know, let the front desk know, stay isolated in your apartment. We will come, uh, a nurse will come, they will give you a rapid test or a PCR test. There's two different tests. Um, and then we'll wait for those results and ask you to stay isolated while we're waiting for those results. If you had direct contact or exposure to another individual, for instance, you had dinner um, that evening with somebody, we want to know that as well, so we can test them as well. And per our protocol, much like we opened the meeting with, is that individual would ask to also stay quarantined until their test results returned. Uh, um, again, I know that that's unfortunate. It could be a, even a 48 hour period where you're in your apartment, mm -hmm. but I would rather err on that than where all of a sudden have an outbreak or something of that nature. And I'm not saying that that isn't a possibility. We know how that, how strong and how quickly this Delta variant is moving. Um, and again, unfortunately as safe as the protocols and processes and procedures we have in place are, um, you know, and, and we'll get stronger in that regard. Um, you know, it's something that we will continue to monitor and continue to keep you informed as residents. So um, that, that's kind of the COVID update. Um, the other update I wanted to provide is the resident satisfaction survey. Um, you were all here two years ago when we did it, right? Mm -hmm. 2019? Yeah. That's, yeah, two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, we will be, and I mentioned in the State of the Castle last month, we will be releasing the resident satisfaction survey in September. September 13th will be kind of that, what we'll call the drop date of the resident satisfaction survey. It'll go out to all independent living residents, and we ask of you to fill that out based on your satisfaction with the services that we offer here at East Castle Place. That gives us a measure of what we're doing, the good, the not so good, and the areas you want to see us move forward with. Um, again, it's about a 60 question survey there's opportunity for comments, and we love those verbatim comments. Um, we want those. And so again, there are, there are things that we changed um, and implemented due to your feedback last time, two years ago. And so throughout the course of the next three to four weeks, you'll be seeing opportunities to sit down with Teresa, Eric, the healthcare team, myself, um, in various formats to, to just kind of regret, um, to gather those questions that you may have currently, but also take a look back at, you know, where did, what satisfaction did we have last year with this, or the last time I did this? What things did Tyler and the team say they were gonna do to improve this? Have they done that? Have I seen improvement? And so again, we wanna, we wanna know. Um, so again, we're, we're, we're wanting and hoping for 100% participation from you as residents. And obviously we want our scores to reflect um, the, the positive things, but know that your direct feedback is what we want. And so if something's not right, um, I'll pick on um, maybe a salon service um, that you may or may not utilize. You know, Maybe that, that wasn't rated as highly. Um, you know, We wanna know that, we wanna know why. If the tastiness of the food has improved, um, because you know of, of certain things that Carlos and, and Chef Tim have done, we want to know that too. And so again, um, I do know that it'll be an interesting survey personally for me, um, just because of the unique circumstances we had over the course of the last 18 months. But at the same time, we still value your feedback. And that's why we're here. And that's why we 
you know, do what we do and we change what we do based on your feedback. Again, there's some things operationally that, you know, we're, we're responsible for, but ultimately this is your home and, you know, without that voice, without that feedback, we, we're not, we're not sure. And so again, um, I think the engagement and the voice is something that I really want to highlight this year. That's something that we didn't score as well as in 2019. And I think we've, we've done a few things. I think there's definitely more to come. Uh, but I want to make sure that you as residents uh, are heard. And so again, over the course of the next four weeks, be on the lookout for that. Um, we'll mention it more at the State of the Castle, um, but the Resident Satisfaction Survey will be dropping September 13th. We'll ask it to be returned by September 21st. So it gives you eight days um, to get it filled out and turned in. We know that if we give uh, two weeks or three, all of a sudden, I'll, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. Um, so again, we're kind of doing the, the <laughs> You know, here it is, do it now and, and return it. And again, it's confidential to you. You don't have to put your name on it. It's a sealed envelope that you'll receive as well. Um, you can put that at the front desk or you can mail that in yourself. But again, you will be probably hearing from a director just saying, hey, have you filled out your survey? That's the only question. Do you need help with the survey? Do you have any questions? Because again, we just wanna track participation. Um, and again, this is a third party vendor that we use. It's SendSite, they do thousands of surveys across the board uh, that will then compare us to LCS compared to the rest of their the nation, so to speak. They, they focus on senior living. So um, just a really unique opportunity, really cool opportunity uh, for, for us, you know, as, as employees and, and as the director team, but also for you as residents to, to let us know how we're doing. So those are the two main things I wanted to highlight. Teresa, do you have anything you want to highlight? Not at this time. I don't think so. Augie, do you want to say something? Because I don't want to take over like a herd of turtles. But that's okay. If you've got questions. Well, but I don't want to take up. Augie, do you have anything? We had an uh, experience yesterday. Uh, I had an experience yesterday. When I was, I came to the movie room to set up the movie at around 6.30. And I was lucky I did. Um, the room was a mess. We had had the yeah. probing bar, the the open pub, was brought inside because of, of, of the inclement weather. Because of weather, Lindsay Hall was um, is still in in tables all over the place and, and uh, unsuitable for movie watching. So I had to. Uh, fold up a bunch of tables and move the chairs around mm -hmm. um, into a theater type environment. All right, and I got it done. But if, if I had been five minutes later, um, we wouldn't have started on time. Um, and also, I don't complain about this much. People ask me how I'm doing. I'm saying, I usually answer, fine, except for my back. Sure. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> and. Um, uh, and that's my concern. There might be some night when I can't move those chairs around and yep. collapse the tables and, you know, and try and clear space for us to watch the movie. Um, wonder if anything, anything can be done about that. I don't, I don't see a good way to handle that transition. Yeah. Because the Lindsay Hall is a very busy place. And sometimes we have things that are almost back to back, and there's very little time to rearrange the furniture. Uh, in in many cases, and, and I'm I'm just raising the question: Is there mm -hmm. something we can do about it, or not? I yeah. did call the concierge desk and say, "Can I get some help with the uh, uh, with rearranging the furniture in Lindsay Hall for for movie and?" The voice at the other end, uh, who I believe was Pat Kamada, Kamada um, uh, answered, I, if we don't have a maintenance guy on and I can't leave the disc okay. for that moment. And, and that's a reasonable response. And I, I right. couldn't but it doesn't anything. solve the problem. It doesn't solve the problem, but, but I don't know whether there is a solution to that problem. Sure. So, um, Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Abby. Uh, I was going to say that the between the time when the pub closed 
which was five o'clock. Mm -hmm. There's an hour and a half there, but I, you know, yeah. But unless, unless every person that used the facility takes a, some responsibility for either changing it for their thing and then letting it go back the way it should be, and I don't know what the, the way it should be doesn't have to be, mm -hmm. you know, but they had tables set up for the pub. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and I don't know what to do about it. I just yep. like to raise it as a possible problem yep. that doesn't have a good solution. So, of course, if there's a problem, usually there's a solution, right? And so I think that in this regard, um, the solution is, is twofold. I, I'll check with Eric um, and see what time our maintenance staff, because um, usually we keep a maintenance staff member here till five or 5.30. Mm -hmm. And so worst case scenario, I'm keeping a maintenance individual here till 5.30, you know, a half hour longer. And then their whole piece on Wednesday, because the movies are just Wednesday evenings, correct? And Saturday. Wednesday and Saturdays. But Wednesdays is also when Roby Bar is. Yeah. And so then they would be responsible from 5 to 5.30 to turn over the, the Lindsay Hall. That's one option, right? Second option is obviously to set the uh, roving bar up, um, essentially three quarters of the way. And so then you still have, you know, five, three rows of chairs still mm -hmm. facing the TV that can be used for the roving bar. But then if the tables are still not yeah. set up or messy, you still have your chairs set mm -hmm. up. So that's another option on how we set up the roving bar. Um, and then thirdly is, is just, you know, does the roving bar need to happen in Lindsay Hall or could it happen in the club room or in another space in the community as opposed to Lindsay Hall? Again, I'm just throwing that out there. I haven't talked to Eric. I haven't talked to Laura. I haven't talked to, to anybody. Um, but those are just some solutions quickly that I thought of. Um, there was a solution that I thought was in place when I came to East Castle Place the first year. What was that? And that was that there was always a maintenance guy on tap that knew about transitions in Lindsay Hall and he made sure that things yeah. were set up. And, and, and I don't know whether that uh, was shut down because of cost or wasn't used or... It was twofold. It's just kind of morphed a little bit. Um, not necessarily cost, it was more of the utilization of, of efficiencies for staff, meaning we had a staff member that wasn't the most efficient and effective individual because that's all they did. So some days they wouldn't do too much mm -hmm. um, at the community for transitions because Lindsay Hall turned over once and that was it. Um, the biggest thing I think that I'm, I need to circle back with Eric on is, is that maintenance coverage past five o'clock. Um, cause I want to make sure we have somebody till at least six o'clock. And again, sometimes that changes, um, cause our normal six o'clock person may be on vacation, but again, that needs to fill the gap. And so then that would, that would be the solve. Um, so again, we don't have anybody dedicated to Laura's team, Scott Cooper, um, have really picked up a lot of that, um, the transitions and things just because there were a lot of moving parts of, Hey, the, the movie's done or Hey, the, this is going late or this is going early, something of that nature. Um, so, so there's solutions, absolutely. I know I, um, Easter Sunday morning, I, East, yeah. I put a place in order because it was a weekend and for and, we, and that's where I, I know that specific thing, um, we have a maintenance staff member and we have a housekeeper seven days a week. And so that situation should not have happened. Oh. Um, so again, that, that has been formally fixed. Um, housekeeping went to seven days a week last year. Okay. Um, previously it was five days a week, Teresa? Yeah. Okay. Five days a week. So there was no weekend housekeeping right. support. Right. And so fortunately with Eric and Ian, we now have seven day a week support in housekeeping and they have a weekend routine where they're focusing on the common areas. That was a change that, you know, we saw was necessary based on, again, your feedback, um, for keeping the community clean so we're not walking in Monday morning with trash overflowing or something on the ground that couldn't be handled so
So we have staff on the weekends to cover that, but again, over the after, what I'll call after hours, um, is something that I'll, I'll talk with Eric on to make sure that we have that resolved. Fine. Okay. Judy, do you have anything? So I, I just wanted to bring up something that's kind of, how do we keep someone like Chef Kim? He's unbelievable. <laughs> And, and he's so unbelievable that twice now I have had him come out and meet because everyone's saying, look at this, look at this. And the plates are beautiful and the food is good. And Dave Tolan yelled out, these are the best blueberry pancakes <laughs> I ever had. And I thought he has to know. And so he came out and and uh, Sam said, oh, he's too shy. And I said, bring him out anyway, we're all loving. And so he did make rounds and he said, I love Milwaukee and my daddy's turned 90 now and I wanna be close to him. And I know all about feeding the elderly and I don't believe in salt, I use Pemsey spices and, and really it's so good. And so, what are you, I'm just going to ask for patient, for employee satisfaction, how do, would you keep someone like that when he in turn has a boss that has to understand and appreciate what we do have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'll just kind of echo some of your sentiments um, for those that might be watching. Um, Chef Tim has been an incredible addition yes. um, to East Castle, and, and you've seen it in the quality of food as well as the taste oh, of food, yeah. right? And so again, um, I, I think that, and the, the last question was how, and I guess the charge was how do you keep him? Yes. And again, um, that's the responsibility of every director, and ultimately the responsibility of myself um, from keeping our strong staff, um, keeping all staff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because that's how we're able to provide service. And so um, I would liken it to uh, a Teresa and how do we keep Lila, right? How do we keep Lila, how, how do we keep Fomata? How, how do we keep Teresa? Yeah, how do, how do, yeah, let's use this example. How do we keep this, this wonderful, wonderful uh, young gal here, uh, you know, happy and employed here at mm -hmm. East Castle? It's all in the relationship mm -hmm. and the culture. Um, and I'll, I'll ask Teresa actually to comment on this as well because obviously she has experience in making sure she's keeping employees because that's one of her charges. Mm -hmm. um, just like Carlos has the same charge of, of making sure Tim um, is, is happy, yes. is um, heard, and you know mm -hmm. has the, the, the flexibility and things of that nature. And so um, that is a, a charge for, for every director in any department and mm -hmm. how to keep um, the strong staff that we have. And, and again, I, I've mentioned to Tim uh, his impact and that he has on the community and how thankful I'm, I'm that he is here. Um, and, and he too is happy. And so again, I think it's, it's when you want to come to work mm -hmm. and you know you have an impact while working, that, that's a driver. Mm -hmm. um, obviously we have to pay competitively, which we are. Um, we have to make sure that, you know, we're not expecting any employee to work 80 to 90 hours, mm -hmm. um, you know, consistently. And we also have to know that there's going to be times where the job is tough and that we have to overcome those tough moments and focus on, on the better. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's a responsibility of us all. Um, myself, Carlos, um, anybody in the kitchen that, that you know, and and again, I'll, I'll just speak to the entire community um, because again, there's so many wonderful individuals that uh, make this community be what it is. And so again, um, again, that's the constant communication. We have employee engagement um, surveys. We have employee feedback sessions. We have one-to-one -one meetings. We have employee recognition events. Um, you as residents are giving back your extraordinary impressions, feedback, all of those factors encompass why somebody were to stay in East Castle Place. Mm -hmm. That's why I stay at East Castle Place. That's why hopefully Teresa stays, you know, has stayed at East Castle Place. So, yes. So far, does Chef Tim seem happy? Yes, mm -hmm. every time. Uh, the question was, does Chef Tim seem happy? And again, I can't speak for Chef, um, but every interaction I've had with him has been positive. Um, so again, um, we'll keep moving forward. So. 
Teresa, I don't know if you have any comments. Well, for me, this. for my staff, I, fig I feel how I keep them is listening, mm -hmm. which is super important, accommodating their needs, obviously following up on any concerns or issues they have right away. Don't let things fester for weeks on end mm -hmm. without getting back to them. And saying thank you and letting them know how much I appreciate mm -hmm. them because a thank you can go a, a, a long, long way. way. And I'm sorry it goes a long Absolutely. way. Absolutely. So those are really kind of the things that I do at the front desk for my staff and just being available to them mm -hmm. when they need me, regardless of the situation. I don't know who was in charge of the dining room last night, but I felt a little bad. Um, it was Jake's 102nd birthday. And when uh, Nancy Bolander and Ann Joyce had regular birthdays, the staff came around and saying, and nothing happened last night. And I mentioned it to our waitress and she said, well, it's in the elevator. Mm. So I felt a little bad about that, but yeah, if you don't want anybody to feel still. left out, if you do it for one, you probably have to do it for all. I think yeah. so. Yeah. And who's in charge of right. reinforcing that? Right. Maybe whoever was in charge last night wasn't aware. Everybody does not take the elevator. That's true. And it is a milestone. Annie did come from assisted living to our dining room. What other questions, comments, concerns might you have? I, I just said plain. <laughs> well, again, um, I appreciate um, everybody's time. My door is always open to anybody. That includes anybody watching. Um, you know, I hopefully we all weathered the storms um, mm -hmm. appropriately. That's one comment I'll make, and I'll make it in the state of the castle is. You know, what do you do in inclement weather? What happens if a tornado were to come through um, Milwaukee? What do you do? Um, and your safest bet is to get to an interior space away from windows. Your bathroom is the safest place. Obviously, if you can get down to a lower floor, that's the best, but oftentimes that's difficult. And so again, know that the structure of East Castle Place is is more sound most likely than any of your normal homes. Um, so that's why I say, you know, get to an interior spot because the, the biggest risk there is shattered glass, um, potentially. And again, we didn't have any of that, fortunately, um, but I do know strong winds came through. I know that we energy said there's over 200,000 people out of power. Okay. Um, we do have generators here at East Castle Place to keep the building cool, to keep refrigerators going. Some of your outlets won't work in your units, but you should have one designated outlet that will be on the generator um, or in the hallways. Oh. Um, so look for a red outlet. Um, oh, oh, and those red are uh, outlet. red outlet, and those are on generators. Um, but again, fortunately, if you didn't know, we're on the same block as Columbia St. Mary's. They get priority. They are the number one priority in any power outage, and we are directly tied essentially to them. So. Um, in that event, know that we energies would be, you know, our their first stop. So, okay. so we're in a good, safe place. Um, and again, I don't think I didn't hear of any power outages here at East Castle Place. Um, I don't even know if the lights flickered, but um, wanted to make sure you were aware of that as well. All right. Thanks for listening to me. <laughs> I, you know, thank you for sharing, um, and thank you for Teresa for for joining. Anytime. So I appreciate that. All right, with that, enjoy. Sign off with a sip. Did you want something? Say something. <laughs>